It's your girl, Denise Joy. Welcome to another episode of Transformation for Your Home. Whether it's DIY or professional help, you can make your home a destination you'll love. Hey, good people. Welcome back to my channel and my Fix My Room Design video series. I'm your girl, Denise Joy, designer at the Furaha Method of Joyful Design. By the way, Furaha means joyful in Swahili. Real quick, hit the like and the subscribe button. It really helps with the algorithm. And when you get a chance, please share this video. I'd really appreciate it. Today, I am sharing tips to help you fix design problems in a basement. This video series was inspired by a viewer who didn't have the budget to hire me, but she wanted some ideas to add more Afro boho style to her home. She wanted me to fix her room. So let's all thank that viewer for this series. Before I jump into fixing this basement, I've got three general DIY tips no matter what your project is. Tip number one, research. That's right. Before you start your DIY project, I suggest you read at least two articles and watch at least three videos. What's that going to do? It's going to give you more information and more confidence and you're more likely to finish your project. Tip number two, ask for help. Honestly, you don't have to go it alone. Sometimes two heads and four hands are just way better. Tip number three, gather your supplies in advance. What I suggest you do is write a list of what you need, take the list with you to your favorite hardware store, and as you are adding things to your cart, mark them off your list. The last thing you need is to get home, get started on your project, but you have to keep running back and forth to the hardware store. Nobody got time for that, right? I learned how to DIY and design from my mom, Donna Jean, and my aunt, Laura May. My mom, she could fix darn near anything. She was a beast. And my aunt, she was the artist in our family. She loved interior design. She would often refurbish vintage furniture. I would sit and watch her paint the walls in her home. And she would paint these gorgeous life-size flowers all over the room. She was absolutely outstanding. They both let me know that DIY was the way to go long before it became the trend that it is today. So today, I am sharing tips to help you fix design problems in a basement. A basement is really unused space in most homes and people long for a way to make that space usable. It doesn't matter if you are a DIY and design beginner or you're a veteran, learning how to overcome design challenges will always help you when it's time for you to execute, right? This particular renter had just moved into her home, which she loved, but she quickly realized that the basement wasn't up to par and with her busy schedule, she didn't have time to do everything herself to improve it. So she hired me to turn a storage basement into a bedroom and a hangout space for her college daughter. The basement had a, had a few challenges from jump. It was oddly shaped and it, it made the client think you really couldn't do much with it. It had narrow sections and odd crooks and corners. Lots of problem solving was necessary, but hey, that's right up my alley. I was confident that I could fix this room. If you have similar challenges in your basement, these tips are going to be a game changer. If you're not sure what to do in your basement to turn it into a space that meets your functionality needs and it suits your style taste, I want you to take notes. There are seven solutions I'm gonna recommend for these kinds of situations. Let's get into it. Problem, unclear design style. Solution, determine your new design style. This client decided she wanted an eclectic boho vibe. I dropped a link below to my video with tips to help you determine your design style. Problem number two, needs a new color scheme. Solution, well, since she was renting this home, the first thing was to find out if she could paint the space. Luckily, the owner said yes. Now, if you own your home, then you'll just select your new color scheme. You want a color triad. That's three colors, one for your walls and two color pops, let's just call it. Neutrals like white and gray and beige and black and brown, 
those are a given. So focus on choosing the colors that will spark the style and the vibe you want in your room. I actually did a full design presentation where I showed her a few different options for colors. She and her daughter selected two bold but compatible colors for accent walls in two different rooms. This client wanted to feel relaxed and organized, motivated and energized. So I chose a rich burnt orange for the accent wall in the bedroom zone and a lovely sophisticated deep gold for the living room study zone. I left the existing shades of white on all of the other wall surfaces. This decision helps to keep the cost down. I did add a bit of a wow factor on one of the walls by stenciling part of the wall behind the television. This stencil leans more to the Afro boho style and is really a conversation piece in the room. Actually below, I put the link to my video on how to stencil a wall, so you can check that out. Leaving most of the wall surface white keeps the room feeling fresh and helps light bounce around the room. The color scheme is repeated in the boho artwork the client's daughter had already purchased, so that was a plus. The burnt orange, the gold, the caramel brown, along with the turquoise color pop really transforms this space. Problem number three, keeping things longer than you need them. Solution, declutter and purge. The client had recently moved in, but once we got started, she realized that she had moved several things she actually no longer needed. I know I've done that before and maybe you have too. If you've done that, hit the like button. It's not just me. I asked the homeowner to purge everything that no longer had a real purpose. So she did a deep declutter to make room for her basement to have a whole new vibe. Problem number four, outdated flooring. The solution, think outside the box. Now, since this is a rental, the client couldn't change the flooring, but all was not lost. The solution here was to strategically use area rugs to cover more of the floor surface. This rug that I chose is a low pile rug, which ups the cozy factor and the neutral tones complement the color palette in the room. Problem number five, a weird floor plan. Now that's necessarily not a mistake that many DIYers make, but they mistake not trying to overcome that weird floor plan. Solution, evaluate the functionality needs. Most basements are not perfectly square. When a room has an odd shape, it stops most people in their design track. The same thing happened to this homeowner, but I was ready for this challenge. First, I sketched the floor plan. Then I asked the client's daughter how she wanted to live in the space. Based on her answers, I created a zone plan. The study zone, the sleeping zone, the TV watching zone, the workout zone. The client also wanted me to hide a, a laundry area which was exposed. It was right in the middle of the basement. And she just, she said she couldn't stand seeing it every time she came downstairs. So my solution, I hung a metal, strong metal curtain rod and hung a set of Printed curtains that she now absolutely loves. Problem number six, dated window treatment. The solution, add an updated soft window treatment that complements the other color palette in the room. A good place to shop for budget-friendly curtain panels is Amazon. Now, although these windows are traditional basement height windows, I added longer curtains and made them wider than the window to make that part of the room feel bigger. That's a little trick, a little hack right there. No problem number seven, no task lighting. So the solution, I purchased more lamps and used the right bulbs. I purchased a new floor lamp and side table for the bedroom, also added lighting right at the study zone, which is so important so that the student can see what she's doing. So tell me y'all, did I fix this room? Let me know in the comments below. This client was really happy with the result. Here's what she had to say. <laughs> oh my God, this is a whole other place. And you painted. Putting the TV and the couch in one space really like creates those barriers and it makes you move between spaces. It can't get no better than that. 
bonus. The client wanted to repurpose her childhood dresser. I used paint to warm it up using a shade of gray that really brought it back to life and fit seamlessly in the room. I also gave her something unexpected, a hand-painted and stenciled vintage dresser repurposed as a TV stand that fits so wonderfully in that eclectic boho vibe that they were going for. I dropped the link to my how to paint wood furniture down below. If you'd like me to use a room in your home for an upcoming episode of Fix My Home, please email me three photos using the email in the description below. If you like this video, I'm sure you're gonna like the video I just added. I hope you check it out. Let me know in the comments, what's your favorite solution in this episode of Fix My Room? I'll see you in the next video.